All right, so I asked and you answered. So let's take a quick look at the hyperthreaded Pentium 4. Now what I'm going to be using in this video is a Pentium 4 HT631. It was a 3 gigahertz model with hyperthreading, and it was released sometime in 2006. Back in 2002, when Intel released its first Pentiums with hyperthreading, some of us were skeptical. We didn't fully understand the technology then, and the majority of PC programs and games were still single-threaded. After purchasing my first Pentium 4 HT, I remember how much faster it felt, although some games still ran better with hyperthreading disabled. This is what I want to test, and also see just how much of a performance difference did hyperthreading, you know, create. So the tests that I'll run will all be done on the same CPU. First I ran them with hyperthreading enabled and then just went into the bias and disabled hyperthreading and re-ran them. Okay, so let's get to it. First up is Passmark, which shows 47 points higher using hyperthreading. The memory also scored slightly higher. Okay, so let's get this test out of the way. I ran Y Cruncher three different ways. The hyperthreaded passes got tested both using a single-threaded run and a multi-threaded run. The single-threaded run showed that with hyperthreading enabled, it could finish roughly 10 seconds sooner. Now you'll notice though that the run with hyperthreading disabled has a higher kernel overhead. I believe what's happening here is that the hyperthreaded run allows for it to handle background tasks uh, while it's still being calculated. Whereas with hyperthreading disabled, it theoretically has to stop what it's doing, handle background processes, and then come back to the task at hand. But regardless, single-threaded performance is fairly close. Multi-threaded performance is even better as it knocked another 20 seconds or so off. As this isn't a true multi-core CPU, the fact that it emulates a second core and increases overall performance this much, it's kind of impressive. Now here's the results on the graph. As you can see, with hyper-threading enabled, the single-threaded run was 6.6% faster, and the multi-threaded run was about 22.5% faster. So yeah, that's pretty impressive for what it is. 7-Zip also performed far better with hyper-threading. With it enabled, 7 Zip finished about 7 minutes sooner and processed roughly 600 kilobytes per second faster. Cinebench seemed pretty close at first, but as the test went on, the hyperthreaded run pulled ahead finishing nearly 12 minutes sooner and scoring 15 points higher. Handbrake was a similar story with their hyperthreaded run finishing nearly a half hour sooner. Unreal Tournament came out a year after the CPU and was geared more for the newer dual-core CPUs. However, in these benchmark runs, the single-threaded P4 pulled ahead by at least 10 FPS on average, sometimes even upwards of 20 FPS. In both runs, the CPUs were completely pegged. Bioshock was released in 2007 and it used the Unreal Engine version 2.5. This is the 64-bit version 1.1. Now, I never actually played Bioshock before, but it looks really cool, so I might actually have to come back and check this game out. However, just running it, it shows the complete opposite of Unreal Tournament 3, which used the Unreal Engine 3. The hyperthreaded runs showed an increase of 10 to 20 FPS, although the reported CPU usage was just over 50%, while the single-threaded run is pegged at 100. A much older game from 2000 and a favorite of mine is Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. This game is single threaded and only requires really a penny or two to run. As you can see, it runs just fine on either setup. However, the hyper threaded run netted about 10 FPS higher. Again, I believe this has something to do with the CPU being able to handle background processes at the same time. At least that's just my guess. I don't have any video captures of it, but I did occasionally on both runs alt tab back to the desktop to check out Task Manager. The CPU was pegged at 100% with hyper threading disabled and it was around 50% with it enabled. With GTA Vice City, each performs so similar to each other that it's hard to tell, but it seems like it performs slightly better with hyperthreading off. San Andreas was the same story as Vice City. Both runs were so close it's hard to tell, but more often the disabled runs seem to have just a slightly higher FPS. GTA 4. As usual, here are the settings I use. These are not set for performance, but for uniformity. 
Wow, um, both are terrible. Both runs were in the single digits, however, the enabled run was ever so slightly better. And as you can see, the enabled benchmark scored 2 FPS higher. Not great, but it's something. Portal 2 was another with the disabled run scored higher. Yes, the CPU was pegged at 100% the entire time, but it scored 10 to 15 FPS higher on average. And no, I didn't forget Heaven. Well, as you can see, it scored much higher on the enabled run. When we look at all the results from the apps, having hyperthreaded enabled definitely helped out, but didn't come anywhere close to matching the lower clock D, but it, you know, it definitely helped. In games, however, there were times where hyperthreading actually hurt performance. This is what I remembered from back in the day. Certain games just ran better with it disabled. I thought it might have just been older single-threaded ones, but as you can see, Porsche Unleashed listed a Pentium 2 in its minimum requirements, so it's definitely single-threaded, yet it took advantage of the two threads. I think what actually happened, though, here is that it was using some other resource on the OS, and because of that, it benefited from, you know, the additional threads. Unreal Tournament and Portal 2 are both multi-threaded, but neither were too happy with the hyper-threading. Neither were GTA Vice City and San Andreas. Vice City, I know for a fact, is single-threaded. San Andreas, I'm not sure of. I've heard both. Regardless, disabling hyper-threading helped both. GTA 4 was just a slideshow regardless, and it could use any help that it can get. As usual, if you made it this far, I'd like to thank you and hope you enjoyed. I know it's kind of a dry subject, but it's something many of us dealt with back in the day. Oh, that's it for this vid, and I'll talk to you next time. Later.